Good morning and welcome to worship on Sunday, May 17th. This is the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, and we are so glad that you are joining us here at Chisago Lake Lutheran Church. We are grateful for the presence of those who are members and who are tuning in, and also for those uh, around the country who have uh, begun to make this a part of their rhythm uh, during this coronavirus pandemic. Of course, there are many of us who are personally affected, and there are some for whom it is uh, seemingly far away from us, the real impact of this uh, disease. And then there are all of us whose daily lives have been impacted in our activities, in our education, in our work. And so we recognize that uh, wherever you are today might be a pretty different place uh, than the person watching this down the road or the next state over. But we are so glad that you are all with us as we worship together and are reminded of the presence of God's Holy Spirit as our scripture speaks of today, the paraclete, the truth, the spirit of truth that comes to walk with us in this day and in the days to come. Welcome. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family. Protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. We begin our worship this morning by giving thanks to the waters of baptism. Kids, if you are in the room, I invite you to run off real quick to the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink and just get a small cup of water. You're going to need that in just a second. Go for it. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. God comforts us in our sorrow so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O God, for the waters of baptism. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here, near and far, here and there. Breathe your spirit into all of creation. Forgive us our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, kids, this is where you come in handy. Put your fingers in the water. Put a cross on your forehead. Put a cross on mom and dad. Put a cross on your brother and sister. And then get a wet. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children, and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Halle, 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 Luja. Halle, 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 Luja. Halle, 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 Luja. Halle, Luja, Halle, Luja. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. children's message already? Oh my gosh, I was just taking a little nap, getting ready for all of you. I'm so cozy here with my stuffed monkey from when I was just a little kid, and my favorite twins blankie. I'm all snuggled up. You know what? You pause the video right now and go and find your favorite blankie or your favorite stuffed animal, and then you can be all cozy and comfortable too. I'll wait just for a few seconds. So pause it and come back. Ready? Go. Okay, did everybody make it back? Are you all comfy and cozy? You are. All right, you know, I have my favorite sock monkey that I had when I was really little. When I was like three, three years old-ish, this was one of my favorite animals I would drag around and he's been through a lot. But, how many of you have a favorite stuffed animal or something, or favorite blanket, or something that makes you feel comfortable and secure and happy? Do any of you have a favorite friend? Well, today's story, Jesus talks about how we can find comfort and security through the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew that he couldn't be with his disciples forever, that someday he would have to leave them. And so he told them that even if he can't be with them, he was going to send them someone who could be with them all the time. And that someone is the Holy Spirit. Have you guys heard about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a tricky part of God because he's hard to understand. It's hard to understand about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is something we can't see. Right now when we're little we can have our blankies and our stuffed animals with us that give us some comfort if we're scared of the dark or if we're scared of lightning. But if you don't have those with you, you can know that God is always with you through the Holy Spirit. And even though you can't see God, we just kind of like, we think of the Holy Spirit kind of like the wind because we can't see the wind, but we can see the trees waving in the wind so we know when it's windy out. The Holy Spirit is kind of like that. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know the Holy Spirit is with us because if we're scared, we can say a prayer and the Holy Spirit will help us be a little less afraid. So, um, so we can be, if we are worried or scared, we can pray to God. So, even when you outgrow your teddy bear or outgrow your blankie, you can know that God will always be with you in the Holy Spirit. So, I want, will you pray with me? So, let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For giving us. 
for giving us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be with us always, to be with us always. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining me again. Have a great week. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A little different vantage point for the sermon this morning. You can see behind me the kind of fancy pants setup we have down there for recording worship. Thanks to Nick Barr for letting us uh, borrow some of his equipment as we bring the service to you each day or each Sunday um, in this way. Two months ago, 12-year-old Tilly Brimehorst was awaiting her grandfather's return from the Holy Land. Her grandpa, Craig, was a retired part-time ELCA pastor, and he was serving a congregation in Fairbaugh, Minnesota. And he had traveled to Israel and Palestine with a church group, and they had had a wonderful time while they were there. Uh, but while they were there, things were starting to unravel with the coronavirus pandemic around the country, here, and around the world in a really big way. He flew back into Minneapolis, and the day later, as he was at home, he started to not feel very good. First, it was a dry cough, followed by a fever, a really high fever. He went in, got tested for COVID-19, and three days later found out that he was positive for the disease. Tilly couldn't visit her grandpa, who was soon hospitalized, but she kept vigil from her family's home in the cities. In a recent interview with the New York Times podcast, The Daily, young Tilly recounted those first few days. In my mind, the first week he was home, I was like, oh, he's fine. He'll get through this. He's strong. But then it got worse and worse. And I was like, oh, no, it's going to happen. Her grandfather was airlifted to Abbott Northwestern Hospital in the Twin Cities, he was quickly put on a ventilator, and Tilly and her family waited at home just a few miles away. I didn't get to talk to him at all, she said. I mean, we sent him, like, letters, but I don't know if he even got to read those. Tilly's mom, wanting her to still feel connected to her papa, asked if Tilly wanted to sleep with one of his shirts. Tilly wore it to bed every night. It felt really, really big on me. Um, it was kind of cold, but it felt really soothing to wear it, though. I wanted to feel like I was close to him, like I was giving him a hug. And I thought about him the whole night. I prayed that he would make it through, that he wouldn't have to go. But my prayer really didn't come true because he had a stroke during the night from a heart disease that he had. Pastor Craig Brimehurst was taken off the ventilator and died Thursday, April 9th from complications of coronavirus. In a public Facebook statement, his wife Carol shared words that her husband had written in his living will. That when he dies, he wants to fall back into the arms of Jesus. Jesus says in today's gospel, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. You know him, says Jesus, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The disciples didn't necessarily need the spirit of truth so long as Jesus was in the flesh and among them, but he was about to depart from them. He was about to experience his death and his resurrection and his ascension into heaven. And so he wants his friends to have another advocate, a listening ear, a grounding force, an abiding presence to walk with them the rest of their earthly days. He wants them to have the Holy Spirit, a presence, a sense, an experienced gentle breeze, a rushing wind, something we can't see, but we can feel it. A known and reassuring word from a friend or the connectedness that we feel to family, even via a screen. Something encountered in the feel, the scent, the comfort 
of a grandfather's t-shirt wrapped around us as we sleep. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit for such a time as this. We can't explain what's happening around us, let alone understand it. We grieve, we mourn, we cry for these unforeseen times. The emotions are so palpable as they rise up within us, as we sip our coffee and watch the morning news, as we witness our children at play, as we hear the sound of our aging parents' voice on the phone and hope it's not the last time, as we read a bedtime story to our grandkids via FaceTime. I will not leave you orphaned, says Jesus. I am coming to you. Words of hope for young Tilly and for us. Because I live, you will live also. Words of hope for Papa Craig and for us. Tilly and her Papa would sneak out at night and they'd pull up the screen and they'd go out onto the roof into this special spot above the porch where they would lay out under the stars. And her papa would tell her all about the Big Dipper, the Milky Way, and they would just talk. One night, Tilly recalls they even took their sleeping bags out there and they didn't tell her dad until the next morning. It's one of Tilly's favorite memories. She hasn't done it yet. Everything is still too fresh and new. But this summer, when it's safe, she plans to go to her grandmother's house and she and her dad and her big sister plan to walk out on the roof and sit there looking at the stars wrapped in the love and the grace of grandpa. That is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. Please respond to Lord in your mercy with, hear our prayer. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly, show mercy to the oppressed, and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way and that those we name here receive the best possible care. We pray especially for Bob, Mary, Eileen, Vida, Larry, Marianne, Dorman, Sally, and Terry. And we pray for those we name in the quiet of our hearts and homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. Remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
At this time, we receive the offering and we are grateful for the many ways that you give to this church, both by sending in your check and giving online. If you are tuning in from far away, we are also grateful for your presence. We invite you certainly to share with the mission and ministry and the ways that you are benefiting from what we're doing here um, in Center City. We also hope that you are continuing to uh, support those local ministries and communities um, in your neighborhood uh, where this this important need and this important work is also taking place. Thank you for sharing God's abundance in so many ways. As a part of our offering today, we also are going to highlight uh, one of the ministries that we have been participating in, something that launched uh, certainly in this congregation, but also around the country, and that is the ministry of making masks for those who need them, whether it's hospital workers, families, individuals. And so one of our members, Marianne Rivard, among many other of our folks here, have been making some of those masks. And she's going to share a little bit with us um, about how this came to be and why it's a meaningful thing for her. Early on, St. Croix Regional Medical Center put out a request for our surgical masks. And at the time, we were all feeling so helpless. And I thought, well, I can do that. I've got lots of time and I've got a big stash of fabric. So I started making masks, as did many other people in the area. Um, I have donated them to family and friends, to the medical center, the fire department had a drive. There's still lots of requests coming in and I'll just keep making masks. There's so many people in the area that have made so many more than I have and have been donating them just as well to whoever wants them. Here's my my setup here, I've got my fabric and all my masks and I'll just keep going. So thank you for everybody that's um, also made masks and donated. Thank you to Mary Ann and so many others who are making this ministry possible. And for you who give to it and supporting real people, real lives, real health, real ministry. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Inspire us to service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
of Christ be with you all. Also with with you. you. Go and share Christ's Easter peace with one another. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family. Protection while we sleep. We pray for healing. For prosperity, we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear it spoken in. Yet love is way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your trials of this life?